So same thing. Why do we care about multiplying? Why do we care about, you know, inverses? Well, all culminate to one big concept here. Well, if you do not like row reduction, if you don't like Kramer's rule, if you don't like substitution method, if you don't like graphing, or if you don't like elimination method, well, there is an alternative to all of those as well. And it's solving system of equations using the inverse of the matrix. So how we can do this as well, given a system of equations, make is only going to be the x's and the y's. So it'll be a, b, d, e. That's going to be what we call matrix A. Matrix X is just going to be the variables X and Y. So that's just that simple matrix. And the matrix B is just going to be what they're equal to. So in other words, C and F here. Okay. So that's what we're going to define them first. We're going to find those three matrix respectively. Okay. Then we can rewrite as this portion as A times X equals B, right? Just following that format, A times X equals the B portion. Now, this is where division comes into play. Like I said, there's no such thing as division when it comes to matrices, but there's inverses of it when it comes to it. So therefore, to solve for X and Y, we would be multiplying A inverse times B. And that's how we're gonna be solving for X and Y in these situations here. Okay? So we're gonna be using its inverse and the multiplication property to, to define X and Y respectively. Okay, so, after all this theory, let's try an example so you can see how this would work out itself, okay? So essentially, all you care about is two A, um, A and B, right? And then the inverse of it. So using this example here, let's just first find matrix A. Okay. So matrix A is just the X and Ys. So two, negative three, one, and five, just like that. Okay. Matrix B is what the equations are equal to. So four and two. Now to find this, the X and Y, we're gonna first find its inverse and then multiply it to this value here. And that's essentially all the work is, is finding inverse and just multiplying. So it's the two constants we just learned put into one whole question here, okay? So let's first find the inverse of A. So that's finding first one over the determinant, right? So again, I'm pretty confident, right? So it'll be two times five is 10 minus one times negative three is gonna be positive three minus. And now the inverse is gonna be flip them. So five and then two here, and then change the sign. So negative one and now positive three. So the whole thing, so A inverse is gonna be, and this is 13, right? So five over 13, three over 13, negative one over 13, and then finally two over 13. So that is the inverse of A. Okay. Again, just following my template we just learned, right? When it comes to it. So now that we have that, we're gonna multiply this times that. And in that order, notice how it's written. A inverse times B. So it's this times that. You can't actually cannot do it the other way around. That's the reason why. Okay. So it's gonna be this times four over two. When it comes to it. Now, if you're wondering, can we actually do this? Well, well, this is a two by two. This is a two by one. So yes, we can, right? They cancel out. So the end result is gonna be a two by one matrix. So a really small matrix. Right, but you know, still possible. So that's why we went over those couple ones where the little tweak ones went as well. Okay. All right, so then we're just gonna be multiplying these matrices out. So remember, row times column. So five times four is 20 for 13 plus three times two is six over 13. Actually, that's too far up. I don't need it that all far. That's it, right? It's only one, one column, so there's only one number going to go down. Next, this times this, so negative one times four is negative four, plus two times two is four over 13. And now again, we just simplify. So simplifying this matrix gives us 26 over 13, and this is gonna be zero, right? 
And then we know 26 over 13 is 2. So this is the same as 2, 0. Okay. So therefore, the top number is going to be the x value, and the bottom number is going to be the y value. So in other words, x is going to be 2, and y is going to equal 0 to solve for the system of equations. Any questions so far on this at all? Is everybody comfortable? All right. Let's try another one, get you even more comfortable. All right. So first we get A, right? So we have a portion. So matrix A is 5, negative 3, 10, and 6. Okay, matrix B is 0 and negative 4. Okay. So just like the last one, we got to find the inverse of A. So A inverse. So 1 over the determinant. So let's see, that's going to be 30 minus a negative 30. Right, so that's good. And then we're going to flip these around. So flip them. So 6 and 5. And just change the sign. There we go. So it's going to be uh, 6 over, this is going to be 60. So 60. 3 over 60. Uh, negative 10 over 60. And then 5 over 60. Again, notice I'm keeping it in fraction because usually you, know, you don't want to simplify and make more work for yourself after you, you, you have to multiply them together. Okay. Right, so now it's going to be this times our B, which is 0 and negative 4. Okay. All right, so the first one's going to be nice, right? 0 times anything is going to be 0, so 0 times this is 0, so that's just a big fat 0 plus negative 12 over 60. All right, next one is again, zero plus negative 20 over 60. So this is end up being negative 12 over 60 and negative 20 over 60. Okay. Now, if you could, if you want, you could simplify them, but you know, it's up to you. You can leave them just like this as the answers because they're technically are the answers. So those are your two answers. <laughs> Any questions there at all? No, not too bad. Pretty easy stuff, hopefully. All right, in that case, let's do the last one here. All right, so A is going to be 1, 1, 1, and negative 1. Lots of 1s. B is going to be 5 and negative 1. Okay. All right, so first find A inverse. So 1 times negative 1 is just negative 1. Minus 1 times 1 is just 1. Okay. So flip these around. And then pop things. So lots of ones everywhere. Right. So we're going to have, this is negative 2. So it's going to be positive 1 half. Positive 1 half. Another positive one half, and then finally, this is a negative one half. All right, cool. And now, lastly, we just multiply, right? So here you go. What is x and y? Go for it. Give you guys about two or three minutes.
Okay, let's see. So it's going to be 5 over 2 plus negative 1 half. And in the bottom, 5 over 2 plus 1 half, right? Because negative makes positive. So this ends up being negative 4. And then negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2. I mean, right, one, two, right. positive 4, positive 2, what I'm going to talk about. Good. And then 5 plus 1 is 6, and 6 divided by 2 is 3. So x equals 2, and y equals 3.